Hi. In this particular slide, I want to share um, uh, an answer to the question of, well, Bruce, what, what do you mean by uptime metrics, uh, you know, uptime economics for a customer? Uh, I think maybe in a first and easiest uh, case would be a, a contractor uh, where you know, a contractor is a, a repair and maintenance kind of creature. It could be a plumber, electrician, heating, ventilator, he, heating ventilation, air conditioning, etc. And what happens is the customer calls up and says, ah, I've got a problem, something's broke, quick, get out here and take care of it. And so the contractor is no problem, I'll call my supplier, I'll get the stuff I need, I'll come out there and fix it right away. Um, if you went to a typical contractor and said, okay, uh, you pay your people in vans uh, eight hours a day, let's just say, at, at X dollars an hour, fully loaded, 25 bucks, let's say, or whatever, what do you actually bill them out at? They might say, well, I, you know, I bill them out at 100 bucks an hour. The key question then would be, well, what what is your build out hours per payroll hour? They go, well, gee, I, most of them anyway that I've talked to have never thought of doing that. But you know, one 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 guy was in sort of a, a breakdown repair maintenance kind of business uh, where you have a lot of odd jobs in a given day, so you a lot of drive time quick fix, hop in your truck, go do something else, as opposed to uh, if you were a commercial electrical contractor and you're on a job site for three weeks, you go to one job site and you're there all day long. Not that they still don't have a lot of downtime for lack of the right tool or, or, or materials to, to do what they're supposed to do. But um, the, So anyway, this, this chap did his numbers and he, he came up with a number of roughly 50%. And I said, well, uh, what would happen, let's do the math, what would happen if you could get that to six hours of build time for every eight hours you paid? He said, well, let's do the math. I mean, uh, I would be picking up uh, another $200. I mean, I'm paying the payroll anyway. I'd be picking up another $200 per guy per day. And gee, if I did that and I gave them a bonus and I still make a lot more money, that, that would be great. I said, yeah, but think about your customer. If you have more uptime, that means you're getting to the right place at the right time. You have all the material you need. You go in, you get the job done. You're not going back to the truck to get stuff you forgot. You're not going out to get miscellaneous stuff that you forgot to buy to do the job with. You're just getting there, getting the whole job done right the first time, and then you're moving on. So by the end of the day, you're not getting to uh, you know a signed job later and later. You know, because contractors will say, well, uh, we'll be there tomorrow somewhere between 8 and noon or 8 and 4. And they give you these huge windows, which paralyzes you. You have to sort of wait around for these guys to show up. So wouldn't it be greater if the contractor gave tighter windows and truly these people showed up and truly they got the job done quicker? Uh, the customer is getting a better service experience when there's more uptime economics. So uh, now the question is, how can a distributor sell to and through the contractor to help them have better uptime metric economics. So now we have two channel partners focusing on uh, a metric that is going to be good for the for the for the for the contractor. It's going to be good for the customer, and it, it needs a, a, a sort of a custom supply chain solution from the distributor. And of course, if you can make that happen, the contractor can't afford but to give the distributor all the business. They can't play the bid, bark, and buy because it all falls apart and they go back to four hours a day. Uh, so that's, that's, an, that's one example. Another example would be where you look at a large commercial account and you look at all their invoices for the year and you go to the ones where at the bottom of the biggest losers and you find lots of, of small miscellaneous emergency rush items. And you can actually look at those items on a customer by customer basis and say, do I see a pattern? And if you see emergency rush orders once a week and it happens, you think, well, where is this coming from in that organization? What is the flawed assumption and what can we do to go out and change that environment and how they buy so that uh, these orders become two a year or four a year instead of 52 emergency high cost for us and they're stock they, they have downtime economics because it's an emergency. So those are ideas on, on, on uptime economics. And remember, in the, in the chronological flow of stuff through your customer, at first, a buyer might look in a silo kind of way at total procurement cost elements, one of them being expediting, but that's the tail that leads into the next part of the, the chrono chronological supply chain or service value story, which is uptime metrics. That then leads into the final thing, which is customer satisfaction retention economics for, for your customer's customer. Thank you.